Have you ever had a loved one or yourself even had a moment where you forgot what something was or thinking or words you were saying really didn't make a whole lot of sense? Have you ever just looked at a coffee mug and not known what it was used for? The National Institute of Aging Through Health and Human Services had an article written in May 2017 and described Alzheimer's as an irreversible progressive brain disorder that slowly destroys memory and thinking skills and eventually the ability to carry out the simplest task. As someone who has worked for hospice as a certified nurse's aide for going on four years now, I have seen the bad and the worst when it comes to Alzheimer's and dementia. Today I will be discussing with you what Alzheimer's and dementia are, the new discoveries on Alzheimer's and dementia, and new technology on how to detect and prevent future outcomes of these diseases. What is Alzheimer's and dementia? Alzheimer's disease, as defined by National Institute of Aging through Health and Human Services, describes it as an irreversible progressive brain disorder and solely destroys memory, your ability to think, your cognitive abilities, and eventually the ability to carry out the simplest task. Dementia, while it's also under the umbrella of Alzheimer's, has been described by the National Institute of Aging through Health and Human Services as a loss of cognitive functioning, thinking, remembering, and reasoning, and the behavior abilities such to an extent that it interferes with a person's daily life and activities. While they still are very similar, they're also very much different in a lot of ways. Now that I've explained what Alzheimer's and dementia is, I'm going to talk about the new discoveries that they're making in the progressive in medicine of Alzheimer's and dementia. In an article by Science Daily on October 1st, 2020, shows that new discoveries are being found for these diseases every day. The article states within a cell you have proteins coming together and you need to process and you need a process to also be able to pull them apart because otherwise everything kind of gets gummed up and doesn't work. What I actually read a few years back on the um, Alzheimer's Institute website was that it's like a buildup of plaque you get in your brain. You have these neurons and you have all these proteins and they connect and at times, kind of like you get plaque in your teeth, you get the same kind of gummy material in between the cells in your brain which is what's stopping them from connecting and you slowly start to um, deteriorate the brain in a way. You start to notice with your loved ones, like if you have a grandmother and she forgot, or you see in the early stages, someone will look at like a phone book and not know what it's for. Or they'll look at an oven or a stove, something they've done their entire lives, or people that they've known their entire lives, they'll look at them and just have a blank stare because it's not, they're not getting that firing in the brain that's telling them what to do with a certain object or how to do a certain task and this might be things that they've done for 80 years or more in the end stages you see more people that kind of have like a what they call a word scrabble where stuff doesn't make a whole lot of sense and you kind of have to know them enough to know what they're trying to say and it eventually gets to the point to where you can't even put a full sentence together so you know that those those electrons in the brain they're not really making that connection <clears throat> Scientists also observed that the building up are very similar to the TAU protein seen in Alzheimer's disease is the same in dementia. With these similarities, they aim to uncover how this mutation is causing the new disease and any advances they can make that might actually cause it from developing in the future as far as with um, different patients around the world. They actually have different study groups to where they have people come in and they'll test on different medications that's supposed to stop and actually break away the the gum and all the buildup around the cells and the proteins and they have different medications that they're developing every single day that they're trying on different groups and they've actually had a few that are successful as far as slowing down the progression of the disease but they haven't yet to find one that's actually completely stopped it the national center for biotechnology information stated in an article written in july 2019 in terms of dementia diagnosis, there have been increasing applications of various machine learning approaches. Most common are PET imaging, MR imaging, and combined PET and MR imaging. Non-imaging studies have generally focused on demographic data and cognitive measures, although more recent studies have utilized novel linguistic anal analysis and unobtrusive monitoring of gait patterns over time which means that scientists take a whole lot of data, they look at it and they kind of see what patterns that they actually have going on in the early stages, middle stages, and end stages of dementia and Alzheimer's. While I think that they need to put more time and money into actually 
finding a cure for this is something that as of right now with all the millions of dollars they've put into studies that they haven't really had a whole lot of progression in besides certain medications that do actually slow down the progression of these diseases but as far as catching it early on the only way that they can do that is from like I said the PET scans the MR scans and that to me doesn't seem like enough I have actually had to see firsthand a lot of people that have been diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's and I think it's probably one of the saddest things I ever have to see and I do notice between different medications how it makes them act or how it may actually help in one area but then they have 10 other side effects like in another area they also went on to add that the use of big data in dementia research has also recently emerged the big data for advancing dementia research project initiated by the g8 health ministries concluded that big data could potentially accelerate dementia research and technology development by helping recognize factors and contribute to dementia and identifying individuals with dementia earlier by promoting better support for dementia care and creating new analysis methods such as data mining that can result in new research opportunities. Examples of data mining in dementia and Alzheimer's patients include working with large pre-existing data registries like I said before with health records and investigate comorbidities with dementia and other diseases, combining different data sources, including fluid biomarkers, MRI, and Alzheimer's disease repositioning, which is in taking all of the data that they combine, all of the research that they've had from other groups, and all the MRIs and all that good stuff that they have, all the years they combine all that together and then actually do research as far as trying to figure out prevention, medication use, and what might actually be good as far as care for the disease and prevention. Today, I fully discuss with you that Alzheimer's and dementia are new discoveries in Alzheimer's and dementia, new technology on how to detect and prevent future outcomes of these diseases. And remember when I asked you before, if you ever have a moment where you forgot something or you didn't know what something was used for, a few hours, a few days, a whole year might pass to where things aren't really making sense. That's what actually dementia and Alzheimer's is, is all about. And for those that have a loved one that have actually suffered from it, um, there are different organizations, the East Texas Alzheimer's Alliance in East Texas, I'm actually a member of. They have different support groups for families that are actually dealing with it. They actually have support groups for the dementia and Alzheimer's patients early on so they can get in and understand what they're actually going to be experiencing, what they're going through. And I think that's one of the best resources we have at this time is not what we found through science, it's actually what we have within our community as far as helping those that are suffering because we don't have a cure right now. So the best thing you can do is find the support you need and understand the disease and what to expect in the early stages, middle stages, and end stages through Alzheimer's and dementia. And every year in October, we have an Alzheimer's walk. I think you all be a part of that and do what you can for your community. Thank you.